So Kristen, thank you so much for, for being here with me today. I know there's a lot going on at the conference today. Big so conference. looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. Um, all right, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your role, what led you to Ernst & Young, and why. Yeah, yeah, so um, I have the privilege of being the global quantum leader for Ernst & Young. Um, I manage a, a, a quantum computing lab. Fantastic. So we have our hands on uh, real business problems, real business data, solving uh, problems in quantum environment. It's amazing to see, and it's, it, things have changed dramatically from my perspective, although I've been following it for the last eight or so years. Yes, you have. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch that seems to be transpiring right now. I'm seeing large organizations actually buying systems, computers, um, or leveraging it via, via cloud model. What's the direction you think is going to happen going forward? More cloud-based systems that people are going to be leveraging here? So, so advanced computing uh, in general is really taking off, right? So, um, and and so some will have access to uh, the the physical hardware for advanced computing, um, but at present, only less than thirty percent of the world's population has access to advanced computing. So, for quantum computing, I do believe we're going to heavily leverage the cloud. Fantastic. So what led you down this path? Like what was what was the, the impetus for you to eventually get into this space? Yeah, so as, as a little girl, I've always loved numbers. Um, but I grew up in a really small town in Louisiana and there was the superconducting, super collider build. It was a big, massive government project and it was in my backyard. And the scientists would come and talk to our school and we had puppets and uh, you know, puppet atoms. And I, I just, I got into it as a little third grader and I've. I've fallen in love with, with quantum space, you know, since being a little girl. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Um, what are the use cases you're starting to see organizations leverage these days? So um, right now, as an industry, no one has hit quantum advantage. And so we are seeing a lot of experimentation and research. And um, I think we're reaching a place that I call quantum utility. So um, we are seeing a lot in optimization. So financial institutions are really leveraging um, optimization across their portfolio for, for trading, uh, managing the front desk to um, optimizing the flow of data through a warehouse. Um, so really optimization is another form of logistics problems as well. So kind of that's the, the some of the first movers that we're seeing. Okay, wonderful. So you have had, you will have two sessions here uh, this week. What were they about? What's the first one you did today and then you have one tomorrow, correct? Yeah, yeah. so today I, I opened up with this notion of from qubits to profit or qubits to policy. And I really wanted to open a dialogue uh, with the community here about how to generate uh, and articulate tangible value. Quantum is this concept and this notion that all of the scientists here know really, really well. But how do we get the average public person to, to care. And, and when I say average, I just mean the, the non-quantum scientist, you know, so just the, the human population to, to care about quantum as much as the, the quantum scientists do. Wonderful. So one thing that I, as a little kid from like, I don't even know, eight, nine years old, when I first internet first came out, I was doing like a modem to modem connections. Oh, wow, yeah. All sorts yeah. of stuff. And then like AOL and CompuServe and all these other things came along. So I've been involved in computers and software and coding wow. for, for many, many years. And now I'm engaged in all sorts of emerging technologies, uh, this being one of them. What do you tell the little girl that you once were many years ago who were excited about these things? How do you, how do you spread this to, to infect people so that more people get involved in the STEM? Yeah, so um, we have education programs, so uh, just really leaning into the conversation. We go into schools, um, middle schools, high schools, colleges, um, and, and just leading from the front, just allowing women to see another woman who's leading a global quantum program is, is something that I, I don't take for granted, but it's also a powerful tool because rep representation, it, it matters. It's absolutely huge, yeah. no question. Uh, last question I'm kind of curious about is, so E&Y, what's the perspective right now for Ernst & Young when, when looking at this space broadly? 
Yeah, so EY um, really believes in uh, the next wave, and so we really believe um, in looking out three, four, five, ten years and having that knowledge base and having the research and having the capabilities because our our clients demand that of us and so we want to help their boards and their, their companies follow that wave as well. And so our, our desire is to research this quantum space, understand it, uh, so that we are right there with our clients helping them solve business problems uh, from, from the get-go. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate right. your time. Thank you.